Hi, welcome to the LaRouche PAC Policy Committee show for Monday, May 27th, 2013. We're joined by our er, na nationwide team here. We have Dave Christie, Diane Sayer, Michael Steger, Rachel Brown, Bill Roberts, and Keisha Rogers, all on via Skype. And I'm joined here in the studio by Lyndon LaRouche, who I believe has some uh, provocative remarks to get us started today. Quite, quite provocative. <laughs> First of all, uh, what, what we have to do is to look back at uh, what has happened in the course of this year on some points. And I'll get at it this directly. We, uh, we have pulled together, a, I have pulled together, a collection of uh, things that I have produced so far this year. Uh, four, uh, four of them are completed. The fifth is still in the making, though it's sign significantly uh, completed. Uh, this brings us to the fact we, we, we went through, up through Saturday and Sunday, we went through what was done in, on, the, on the program then. That was an excellent job, but we didn't complete the job. Mm -hmm. And that was my, my doing in part. I simply said, we have to do this job, and our people have to do it. And they did it. But they did it as a, a contemporary action. And we're looking for something much, more deep, much deeper. Because we, and that's the kind of thing we're going to have to deal with. Uh, we, we do not yet understand the fact that we are headed for a kind of destruction already, which will shake anybody. If, because if you look at the, what uh, we're getting on, uh, in terms of, the, of what we're getting reported, we don't even know how bad this is. If you look at the quantity of the material and work that is built on, into this proposal mm -hmm. for this present uh, effort. With the Dodd-Frank yeah. fraud. Uh, yeah. fact, the Dodd-Frank, if you look at the magnitude, you, there, there would be practically no person left alive in the United States or Europe mm -hmm. after the application of Dodd-Frank. Because the, the magnitude, this, the horror of the great magnitude of this debt, which is dumped into this process, this is beyond imagination. Practically no citizen of the United States will be left alive when this process is done, the glass this, uh, deal, mm -hmm. Dodd-Frank. Dodd-Frank, the rate of, of in, hyperinflation built into Dodd-Frank, both in the United States and in the transatlantic region, is such that if they got by with it, none of you would be alive. You couldn't, because you'd be stripped of everything, in, in, you know, food, everything else, you'd be stripped of it. So therefore, now th we, we dealt with the first thing on Saturday and Sunday discussion. Now we're going to get to the hard stuff. We better start discussing it. Mm -hmm. Because if this, if this thing were put into a, a action, and it's voted up now, if it were actually put into action, it's not prepared for full action yet, because there are too many things that are not completed on that pro program. But the program as it stands threatens to cause the extinction of virtually every citizen of the United States, and also in Europe as well. Think of the hyperinflation that is built in to this system. The program is to apply the full weight of the hyperinflation and take it out of the citizens of the United States, Europe, and so forth. None of you can live under those conditions. So it is necessary to crush the Dodd-Frank process. Otherwise, most of the human beings of this planet, and you see what the Queen would meant by saying she's going to reduce the population from 7 billion to about 1 billion people on the planet. That's what you're looking at. But actually, it's more than that. Almost no one would be left alive except these few swindlers if that were done. 
So therefore, we have, we, what we did on Saturday and Sunday was appropriate to that occasion. But we did not yet take into account what I knew, the magnitude of the debt which is supposed to gobble up our population and the population of Europe. Mm -hmm. If you allow Dodd-Frank to be implemented, you're all dead. And it, practically everybody on this planet is dead, at least the transatlantic region. 20 plus nations are involved as a target for a collection sweep to take every penny of that charge and take it away from you and from the people of this nation. So obviously we have to react to this appropriately. to say that what is being done by Dodd and Frank is mass murder of the citizens of the United States and other places. And you are on the list. So the time is to do something about this. And now that's my st story to begin with today. Mm -hmm. I have in case uh, actually four programs that I've completed mm -hmm. so far this year. I'm in the process of completing a fifth one. Most of you have seen something or reacted to something of the first four, because this, this came from February into, into May. But uh, I don't think you really appreciated it fully. And I think it's rather important that you no I now go to the next step. You have done the first thing. You've reacted to the first thing that has to be reacted to, Dodd-Frank. Now you have to see how bad Dodd-Frank is and why no one must be left alive to do the Dodd-Frank job. Hmm. Crush it. Destroy it. And anybody who's not destroying it is your enemy. Because that's the way you've got to do it. So anyway, I'll throw it to you. I've got a lot here in case you need it. Well, I would say today is Memorial Day. And I think I was reflecting on Abraham Lincoln's speech at Gettysburg, which really was a challenge to get the American population who were living, those had, who had not yet made the ultimate sacrifice for their nation to dedicate their lives, that those who had given their lives would not have died in vain. And I think it's imperative that the people watching this program and, and that each of us really internalize what this act means. It, it is spectacular. It is a shift that you would have in the actual text of the bill, the principle, or I, I can't, I don't know what to call it, the unprincipled principle that the priority over human life, over the sovereignty of nations, over everything that's valued in our Declaration of Independence and Constitution is the functioning of an institution of, of a bankrupt criminal enterprise, a GCP, globally active, uh, international, uh, systemically important financial institution, a so-called systemically important financial institution, to which people are supposed to bow down, drop dead, give everything they own, so that this alleged institution can maintain its existence. And of course, the truth of the matter is that were that to occur, nothing would maintain its existence. But I think uh, given that it is Memorial Day, every American patriot should recognize this bill as an attack on our republic and what people have died for in the past and present for this nation and make sure that this thing is, is fully de defeated and recognize it for what it is. It's not simply not Glass-Steagall, and it, it is an attack on everything that's in the Constitution of the United States. Dodd and Frank, who are both still living, were to push through this legislation, as they are trying to do, on behalf of the British monarchy and similar kinds of people. If they were to consent to that process, if they were to consent to the implementation of, of the, uh, the Dodd-Frank bill, they 
are mass murderers and to be regarded as such because there's no way that you can do what is specified so far on this account which would not be mass murder of, among others, the citizens of the United States. So this is not a matter of criticism. This is a matter of war. What they have declared, if they are not clinically insane and therefore, you know, condone them as being insane, but if they're not clinically insane and know what they've read and what they've re what they argued for, they are already criminals in the extreme. This is mass murder. When you take into ratio what they're talking about uh, collecting on, they're, coll they're collecting on a, the most massive debt, mm -hmm. financial debt ever conceived. And they expect you and others to be eaten for that sake. So this is not a question of policy. This is a question of crime. What Dodd and Frank in and of themselves have done is a, a criminal, criminal in the extreme. They are mass murderers in the extreme. And you, do, you cannot let any citizen in this nation have any different view than that, because those are the facts. All you have to consider is the magnitude of the debt which the Dodd-Frank bill claims now that it's territory and you're dead if you let it happen. So therefore, this is not a question of criticism. This is not a political issue. This is a criminal issue. And the crime is Dodd and Frank and anybody else who's working with them on this. They have well, to be... That may be oh, was just say that may be why they're gone. Uh, I'm not sure why they're... Uh, that may be why they're gone, po both Dodd and Frank. Sorry, does anyone else hear that echo? All right, well, I'll just go with it. Anyway, <clears throat> that may be why they're gone. Both Dodd and Frank are nowhere on the scene anymore. Uh, he can. They both may claim, well, it was uh, political and so forth, but... Who knows, maybe they knew that they, they had performed one of the most criminal acts and were fleeing the scene. Um, I just want, I was reminded as I thought of this, uh, Brad Sherman, who had brought up that in the middle of the bailout, the congressman from California, when the, the initial bailout was proposed, and from the floor of the Congress, he actually got up and said that the Bush administration had said, more or less said, if this didn't go through, then there was going to be martial law on the streets. And so it just has dawned on me, how do you go from threats of martial law to keep this corrupt, dying system alive which, which the, with the original bailout, which of course was done by the government, or at least uh, 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 in form was done that way, to now all of a sudden the Dodd-Frank, which would, would, would have been some... Uh, you know, just uh, even though we knew at the time that the bill was written by Credit Suisse and other uh, other banks of, of Wall Street. So uh, it's just now clear, you don't just go from martial law on the streets to some innocuous Dodd-Frank bill, but that this thing actually had the embedded criminality. And I, like I say, I wouldn't doubt if that's why Dodd and Frank are both gone, whisked away to some high towers in, uh, in Wall Street for, to, uh, for, to, to be uh, paid for their, their crimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you have to take the magnitude. You've got to look at the magnitude of the debt they're talking about on the, under this argument, mm -hmm. the argument they made. That means extinction of most of the citizens of the United States. And this reminds us of the fact that the Queen of England wants to reduce the population of the planet from seven billion people to approximately one. And this would do it. Yeah, that's, that's what the policy is. If you're stealing the savings and the uh, 
relatively legitimate wealth of the population to pay what you're bringing up the magnitude of debt 1.2 trillion dollars minim quadrillion dollars minimally of derivative obligations gambling contracts that's a uh, robbing of the real value in the system to pay for an artificial value so it's going to be depriving the majority of the population of what they need to survive and it goes directly with the policies of depriving Americans of not only employment but health care food and those and the, all of the basic necessities of life and I think it's worth making the point that for one that the original uh, excuse for removing Glass-Steagall uh, was that they wanted to allow U.S. institutions to be involved in the foreign market, to be able to invest in the securities market of the planet. And what we see as the end result of that process is the necessity for a global bail-in, the creation of this international construct to get rid of the sovereignty of nations, any law of nations, and force the necessity of an international bailout and murder policy. So going back to the, the origin, you know, what we said that this glass, the only way back, the only way out of this mess is Glass-Steagall, is really that the removal of Glass-Steagall is what allowed for this whole process to occur, the whole murder policy to occur. And the only way to stop it, obviously, the alternative is to put it back that this if you take the magnitude of the debt it's under discussion mm -hmm. there wouldn't be any many people left alive in the United States you want to just take it what are you talking about the sudden removal of all assets all fungible assets and more huh? immediately how much is left for people to eat and live if that kind of collection is done? How long will it take absolute starvation to kill you? Mm -hmm. There's no way you can treat this anything except as a criminal operation. It must be destroyed. Now the best way to do that is to force Glass-Steagall into operation which will eliminate it. It will be only eliminated totally, but it will cause a fight over the question. And Glass-Steagall would mobilize the people of the United States to recognize what the enemy is, and they would stand up and say, we don't accept it. As You've got to understand that the American people are generally cowardly. We know that. We've had the experience of that. They're cowardly. There are only a handful of people in this nation, relatively speaking, who have any guts at all. The typical citizen has no guts. They hear that they're supposed to say something, they'll say it. Or they'll say something approximating that, whimpering along as they go. They're not fighters. You have a limited number of fighters in this nation. If you want to get the fighters out, and that's what you need, the, same, the true patriots, or fighting patriots who will not concede. You've got, to, you've got to engage the population with such rage against their swindle huh, that they will not tolerate it and they will go for Glass-Steagall automatically and will fight it from there. So there's no soft way you can argue this. The guy who proposes this kind of thing is out. He must be thrown out of office, must be thrown out of any position of influence. He's a criminal in the extreme, the worst possible kind of criminal. And anybody who supports it, we know who's supporting it, is Wall Street. Wall Street and everything that represents that. We're going to have to shut them down. And very simply, we say, we'll say they're bankrupt. Their assets, their claimed assets, will simply have to be canceled. It's simple, isn't it? Then we will issue the credit on behalf of the United States government. We'll apply it to things like the general welfare, will apply it to the, this Glass-Steagall as such in its, its intentions, and that will solve the problem. But it's going to be a fight, mm -hmm. and a hard and serious fight to win that. Glass-Steagall must go through. Anybody who is opposing Glass-Steagall now is an enemy of the United States.
Well, this is, this is the time that Congress has to be forced to change because they've had a, they've had a series of chances to, to deal with some of the worst decisions that have, that have been made. I mean, it's really been a process over years. You think about the, the approval of the TARP program beginning at the end of the Bush administration, where they basically handed over to a, a treasury, you know, first under Hank Paulson, and then, um, and then later in the Obama administration, made up of people who basically came out of Wall Street. They handed over, and they, they realized pretty quickly that what they had been suckered into doing, or, uh, or blackmailed into doing, was handing over uh, the ability to, to the Treasury to have to basically put unlimited funds into purchasing and, and, and uh, bailing out virtually every type, uh, any type of, of financial derivative or financial asset. And uh, they, didn't, they didn't fight uh, at that time. They didn't really fight against it. And uh, this has gone a step further. Uh, Frank Dodd, now that it's clearly out in the open, that what they've done has gone a step further and, and bypass entirely any role that the government has played and simply said that these, these same financial institutions internationally now, as part of an international plan, can simply go and take the, essentially take the ability for the physical economy to function. And by doing so, you know, shut down the entire real economy. So Congress has to be forced to realize their role in willfully going along with the destruction of the sovereignty of the country. And, you know, I, I, I think the, the fact that this has been a long process culminating in undeniably the, the worst ab abrogation of responsibility so far uh, means that every single member of Congress has to, be, has to be forced to face the fact that they've done this, they've allowed for this, and, and have to own up to it. And the point is, but this is not that simple. This is murder. This is inevitable mass murder. Take the extent of what the claims are and look at what the potentiality of the United States is if those claims are being enforced. You're talking about mass murder, rapid mass murder of the citizens of the United States. And as I said, this is an echo of the British Queen's conception of reduction of the population. Well, from seven billion down toward one billion people on the planet. That's what she's demanding. That is now what the European system is doing, what the Queen proposed. You're not talking about oppression, you're talking about mass murder. You're talking about extermination. This is not a question of money. This is a question of existentialism. Unless this is defeated, you don't have a chance and nobody else does. You have no rights, you have no security. You fight this and defeat it now or else. That's where we are. That's why we cannot have any of these so-called, we negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Negotiation means shut them down. Shut that law down. It's not completed. Shut it down. Put Glass-Steagall through, shut it, shut the other one down. Hmm? That's what we have to do, period. You must shut down this operation. You must shut down the Glass, this, you know, Dodd-Frank operation. And the people who Dodd and Frank really do not have the magnitude of evil needed to do the job. So they put, passed the job over to people who would do it like the British monarchy. And the British monarchy has been out for mass murder of the human population. They said so repeatedly. The Queen has insisted there must be a reduction of the human population from seven billion people down toward one. 
And she hasn't indicated that that's the, that's the bottom line. And this is, the, this is what I'm serious about. You think of the magnitude of what they claim these assets are that they're going to take. You cannot tell me that you're going to live or survive if that's done. This is not an oppression. This is mass murder and you're on the ticket. And that's what we've got to convey to our citizens so they have, get their guts together and say, what, what can we do? What can we do? We, we know what we can do. We can change the law by putting Glass-Steagall into effect. Anyone who's not willing to put Glass-Steagall into effect is, is culpable. Culpable of being stupid or corrupt. Or evil. How about evil? That's a good one word to use. And I think that's the challenge that we have to get across in a very urgent manner to the American people. Because it's the American people have to understand that the policy of mass murder is not something that is going to happen. But the intention is already there and it's already taken place. I mean, we look at the reports that we put together on the food crisis. You look at the reports that have been put together on the you know, slashing of our manned space program. The murderous policies are already in effect. The rate of unemployment right now, the physical economic breakdown. And I mean, this isn't something that we have a whole lot of time for people to come to uh, understand or decide that they want to come go along with but that the idea right now is that we're in a situation where if people don't get out of their uh, idea that they're gonna just not fight, because I think the most important thing about this, you know, Dodd-Frank and what we're seeing right now with these murderous policies is that, uh, as we've been saying, this is not just about going after people's money. We're not talking about uh, a lot of people have the sense that what happened in Cyprus was, oh, they were starting to take the money out of people's bank accounts and loot people's bank accounts. But that's not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a policy that says, you know, you will have a society that's no longer sovereign. Nations can't function any longer. Business can't run any longer. Uh, you will have a situation where you will see more and more people out on the streets digging in trash cans through starvation and a total collapse of almost uh, dark age conditions if these types of policies are to be continued. And so I know a lot of think times in the organizing, we run into people still have this monetary value on the way that they're thinking about something like Cyprus. Well, I've already taken my money out of the account, so I'm not worried about it. Oh, I know Obama, he's out to steal my money. Um, so I'm just going to put it under my mattress. I'm just going to invest it in gold and silver. And they have no idea as to what the policy is to uh, with this empire that they don't care about your money. They have plenty of money. What they care about is that they're going to destroy you. They're going to kill you. And you're not going to be able to eat. You're not going to be able to feed your families. You're not going to be able to survive. And until we get that across to the population, um, uh, with what this Cyprus bailout, bail-in policy, the Dodd-Frank policy really represents and the urgency that they have to understand very quickly the solutions, uh, not just these guys are out to kill me, but how do we get, uh, how do we get through this, uh, really has to require a very rapid and unique understanding of what our Constitution represents and why we've lost that and what the solutions are that we're uh, putting forth right now with immediate reinstatement of Glass-Steagall banking reorganization. Yeah, we cannot be, we can't compromise. The idea to try to compromise, the compromise is say, wait, maybe it's not that bad. It is that bad. It's worse. Actually, just on that note, I, I think what, uh, what Keisha was just going through, like even take the, the food crisis and you know you look at this insanity of the of the biofuels this is not accidental this is not market theory this is the direct taking of of food and burning it and and denying the the actual ability for humanity to sustain itself 
And, and it's all done under the context of this so-called market theory, and it's the same as what they did with this health care bill. When we put the Hitler mustache on Obama, or when, when you did, Lynn, it was based on this idea of the extreme version of utilitarianism, which was, you know, was identified at the Nuremberg Tribunal by uh, Dr. Leo Alexander that the slippery slope that led to all of the later atrocities of the Nazi party started with the T4 euthanasia program, which was the extreme uh, version of the utilitarian theory of the Nazis, or frankly of the British, I should say, Jeremy Bentham and, and company. But that was the, the logical outplay of what they did. And I'm reminded, actually, Rachel had brought this up in, a, in some earlier discussions, what, what Curler had done on really taking this to the extreme. And he said, you know, if you, if you believe in this market theory, if you believe in just the, the substance as being the, the, the flow in the market of, of the, the particulate matter, he says the extreme of this would be to take the human individual and the value therein contained as breaking down the constituent elements, the carbon, the, you know, all the oxygen, nitrogen, everything that makes up a human being, and then selling it on the market for, you know, I think it was about six dollars or something. And that's the extreme. That's what actually what this kind of, when you, when you start reducing the, the mindset of the population that effectively by by taking our very food that makes us up by taking away the health care and, and putting it all on this market theory and frankly you know this is what this whole thing about these g is as, as Diane was pointing out the criminality that these institutions take priority that that's the value in the system it's not the human beings that that should be protected under our Constitution but now under the fraud of this law we're going to we're going to put the value in the the market the value in these institutions over the value of the people and it's the same nazi policy that people like curler were were polemicizing against and fighting against and maybe just to make one final point i you know that, that this was a the big battle of of science and you know uh I, I'm reminded, Lynn, of some of what you're getting at, or at least a, what I what I gleaned from your recent papers, is just where do you place the value? If you're not placing it in a process, and you do reduce it to this particulate matter, you get this kind of utilitarian constructs that 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 ultimately define things. And you know, people like Planck, they got it too, and they they fought against the Nazis. You know, if actually Planck's son died in the in the attempt to to uh, k uh, kill Hitler and um, the the operation Valkyrie that that so you know they, this is this is I, th I think again just to that this is what we're fighting against it's this philosophy and the the philosophy and practice that we see which is Nazi economics and what you're seeing is now in this legislation you're seeing a culmination of what was already criminal is now going to greater extremes. Therefore, you're not, you're not negotiating an issue. You're recognizing evil, which must be destroyed. And that was done in the Nuremberg trials. You're now at the point where Nuremberg charges against these people involved are due. because they cannot be tolerated in society. People who do this cannot be tolerated. This is the intention to commit mass murder. And this is the commitment to do the mass murder. That is a crime. The best we can give them is life in a dungeon. We might even feed them. To what, I don't know. There's also the, the, the viciousness of this bill, I, I think we have to highlight because of what you're saying, Lennon, in the context of the amount of debt obligations that will be imposed upon the heads of the United States. I mean, in particular, one is the fact that you have the FDIC as an institution, which was set up to defend the population as a response to the Glass-Steagall bill to protect deposits and protect the population's bank accounts. 
now in this context, they're, asked, they're forced or now have been brought into the scheme to apply a policy which will within the course of up to, within 24 to 48 hours can liquidate the entire banking system of the United States. It can just shut it down. And I think people have to realize this is not, they're not going to drag this out. They're not going to do one institution at a time. They will do this in mass to the entire country, to the banking system, at the point they recognize they've got to move because of the desperate breakdown of their own financial system. This will happen quickly. You can't talk about it. If you talk about it, you can be thrown in jail. They will shut you up in with any way they have to because they've got a point now of total desperation and they've got the FDIC ready to implement a complete liquidation of the entire bank accounts. And the point is that the magnitude of the debt is so large. It is so massive. There won't be anything left. They're not going to leave, you know, FDIC insured means absolutely nothing in this case. They are going for complete devastation and complete control. That's what the point, that's what Dodd-Frank makes available because it subjects us to imperial law, to British imperial law, not the United States Constitution. And that's why they brought Obama in. They brought Obama in to sign off on British imperial law in the United States. And Dodd-Frank is the direct expression of it. And Dodd and Frank are both guilty. They may not have gone to the extremes that the, their successors are working but they put the law into existence. And then they handed the law and its authority over to the, to the real swindlers, the mass swindlers. So now Dodd and Frank are now in the picture. They were in the picture. They're now sitting on the sidelines. Side but those to whom they passed this law are out to enforce it. Therefore, I think part, go ahead. I was just saying, this stuff must be destroyed. There's no way to compromise with this. Mm -hmm. you, the, the structure of the Europe, the structure of the United States and other places is extremely sh shallow. The resources are almost non-existent now. Everything is extremely fragile. Mm -hmm. One push and you've got genocide. The reason... The reason that people are susceptible to going along with this, like Keisha saying, oh, I'm safe, I have my money in some safe secret place, or Bill Gates really epitomized this in his interview with the Washington Post about health care for Africa. He said if you spend more than two or three hundred dollars per person, you bankrupt the system. So therefore, you he doesn't say, so therefore we should get rid of the system. He says, therefore, we, we can't do it. We should let there be mass murder. And what you have now addressed repeatedly from many different flanks and on higher and higher level is this question of what it means to be a human being as opposed to being a creature living in the fixed domain of sense perception. Because it, it, by, sense, by living in sense perception, people fall into this nonsense. I actually heard someone saying that the whole point of the Constitution is life, liberty, and property, where the Declaration of Independence does not say that. It says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you think of the greatest contributions of mankind, the question of a, a Bach prelude and fugue, what is the value of that and where does it exist? Is it on a piece of paper? Is it in the ink of the notes? Or is it in a higher realm, uh, similarly with the question of classical drama, because it's not even in the mind of an individual. It is in the mind of an individual, but the power of it is the communication among minds, um, minds in a society, minds, the performer, the composer, and the audience, this quality of dialogue, which you could never degrade to the level of putting into a monetary value or monetarist system. But when people lose sight of what it is that actually makes us human and what is the concept of our posterity and the question of future humanity, then they become susceptible to behaving like animals and to going along with with an imperial outlook and an imperial system. Mm. 
Precisely so. And that's what we are. We're at, we're at that point, not many of the point we were at on Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. which was a valid point, a valid issue. And we dealt with that nicely. But that issue is actually had to be done first in order to pull in to say, what are the implications of that? Mm -hmm. And now we're dealing with the implications. And the implications are mass genocide. Possibly risking even the extinction of the human species. Because the effects of this kind of killing can per bring forth diseases which can eliminate the species. All of them. It's tantamount to thermonuclear war in terms of effects. Therefore, these people who have these policies must be removed from all authority in office. And then we'll get Glass-Steagall, and then we'll fix things. That's the attitude. Get this thing over with. Get these guys out of the picture. Huh? Get into the glass, real Glass-Steagall operation. Huh? And start to build, rebuild the world. It's going to be a tough job because so much has been destroyed already. But just in, get the right laws into place fast. And Glass-Steagall is the first step. And you emphasized on Saturday that the authority comes from the highest law of the land. This is an issue of the Constitution and the inherent rights of every citizen by the Constitution as the highest supreme law of the nation. So this immediately stricken all this as invalid, unconstitutional from the highest level. Yeah, and it's only money. The issue is money. It's only money. Fake money. Yeah, it's fake money, but it's only money. Well, mm -hmm. Most money is fake, pretty much fake these <laughs> days. Right. Anyway, but the, for this kind of thing, it's, 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 you're talking about genocide. You're talking about irreparable damage to the existence of the human species. Under those conditions, that's the law. Mm -hmm. And that law must be enforced. Immediately. And the best thing to do is get Glass-Steagall into place. And once that's done, we're ready to move. Mm -hmm. We're ready to change things. Not only for ourselves, but for the world. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get that across to people that we have that commitment. They have to understand that it is our commitment. We believe in that. We can guarantee that we will stand by those commitments. Mm -hmm. And that's what Glass-Steagall did with President Franklin Roosevelt, right. and it's what it can do again now. Right. And we have all the critical elements, the NAWAPA program, the reconstruction program, the uh, international cooperation, the space development. But these mm -hmm. are the keys to get us there. We are about to get to, as you know, to get to the edge of actually developing controls over the inner part of the solar system. Mm -hmm. We're moving in that direction. And if you understand some of the things that are poorly understood now or not understood at all by most, mm -hmm. there are principles out there which, if we understand them, can lead to that kind of success, which is where, where we must go. But we've got to get out of this phase of the old age, right. and we've got to get into the phase of the new age, because we ha we're going to have to do something about Mars. Not when I don't, I'm not pushing putting a single person on Mars. It's not necessary to put a single person on Mars because we can do all we have to do by well-conceived uh, constructions mm -hmm. at remote, at a distance. What we want to develop is we want to develop a system which communi of communication between Earth and Mars, in, for example. We want to develop, improve systems which will increase the power generated within Mars, for example, and in Earth. By increasing that power and that development, which is a tricky thing to do, but we can do it. We can change everything. We can begin to get man out of his foolish idea about man on Earth and realize that we can control parts of the solar system 
Only parts, perhaps, and only in a minimal way at first. But that's the beginning. We must go in that direction. We must make the solar system ours. Not as by occupying it, mm -hmm. but by coordinating the parts in ways which will create benefits for the solar system as, a, as an entity. And we must and can do that. It will take few centuries to do that. So what? Work is a good idea. <laughs> I'm sure we could continue this for a while, but I think there's a lot of work to do. There is a lot of work to do. But this, is the, this one thing has to be clear. You cannot talk about, we've got a problem, we're getting oppressed. You've got to talk about the destruction of the human species. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what you've got to fight. You cannot, you cannot complain. Mm -hmm. You've got to destroy. You must destroy that policy. You must uproot it, destroy it, as was done in the, against the Nazis in the post-war experience. Mm -hmm. You must uproot and destroy the threat, the cause, then we can do fine. Mm -hmm. And removing Obama is a very good start to destroying it. Yeah, he, he could be retired nicely now. We'll find some place to hide him. Just as long as he doesn't come out and expose himself, expose his identity. <laughs> Probably find an island in the Pacific where he can live, live in security. Uh -huh. Nobody will bother him. <laughs> Lynn, just... Real quickly, I, I I think you know just what you, the course of the discussion and so forth, and then actually just the reflection on what Roosevelt did with Glass Steagall, the New Deal, versus what was going on in Europe under fascism, under the the British control, uh, and so forth, and then frankly what the the Nuremberg tribunals set forth as a statement of natural law, I, I, I am provoked by what you had just brought up in the course of the discussions concerning these are Nuremberg crimes, and I just wondered if maybe you had an idea of how to proceed uh, on that front, on, on the question of the Nuremberg crimes. We don't need too much, actually, for a beginning. What we need to do is what I've indicated so far. You've got to eliminate this problem, and Glass-Steagall gives us a leverage in which we can do that. It's modest, it's going to be tough. We have a lot of things that we needed, which have been destroyed in the meantime. But we can get this thing going. And the, the challenge then comes to the following two generations within this century. Uh, we're now gobbling up the uh, good part of this new century <clears throat> with the, the now. Mm -hmm. we, if we put two more generations on top of this, or even going toward three, and if we push in this direction, we can, on the basis of facts that are known, scientific facts, other facts that are known or, or can be developed, we can accelerate the recovery, the recovery of humanity. And we, what we have to do is get rid of this process, get rid of this murder, and get our people to functioning. They may function poorly, but they will do better. We've got to think of us in terms of centuries. You know, you, yeah, essentially, 25 years is a, a period of, of going from infant to impregnation, impregnation of, up to uh, employment, skill. So you've got four generations per century. We've gobbled up a big chunk of the first of those generations of this century. If we take the next two generations and we start to push this thing in the right way, we will be on the way to the conquest of Mars, not to occupy it as, as by heat people, but by developing it as a part of a system through which mankind will be able to exert greater control over the nearby parts of the solar system. Therefore, we, at that point, we have vast assets. Let's take all those rocks that are floating out there. They're full of all kinds of minerals and things that have immense value. We can begin to tow this stuff in and take it over. Mm -hmm. We can put stations and systems on many of these large rocks. And we develop those systems. And those systems will enable us to, to exploit other parts of this solar system. 
We will think of mankind by the end of this century. If we do this, by the end of the century, the conception of mankind will be revolutionized. Mankind will be out of the woods. Mankind can be what mankind should become. I think that's the most important point, is the conception of mankind. Yep. That's where the revolution has to occur. That's what the point is. Be only mankind, only the human mind, is capable of doing what has to be done. Mm -hmm. So we would say that the people who don't agree with that have acquired non-human minds <laughs> and should be treated accordingly. We can find places to put these animals. Mm -hmm. Treat the animals kindly. That's what we say about some of these people. They're the animals. Mm -hmm. Treat them kindly. Mm -hmm. Justly. <laughs> Justly. But kindly. <laughs> well, I think we have a lot of work ahead of us this next week. Yes. So. We sure do. And we've got to have to do it. And mm -hmm. But we've got to get ourselves mobilized. So, you know, this queasy kind of thing. Well, maybe this, maybe that, all that. No, no, no this is mm -hmm. tough business. It has to be done. Mm -hmm. The job has to be done. No quarrels. It has to be done. And we won't be able to do it too well because we're not that skilled. We've got all kinds of impediments in our population. We, we're going to make a good try, though. And I think if we can make the good try and, and get rid of this thing, I think mankind will be sufficiently scared at the threat of genocide on the British Queen's scale. And maybe she will retire by that time, just disappear. But once that's over, imperfect as mankind is, we can we then be free to make some progress. And in this century, with the other, you know, quarter, the other two, three quarters of the century coming on now, we should be able to accomplish that. But we should have that intention right in our minds. That intention. The next three generations. That's our intention. Mm -hmm. I think that's clear. Unless we have anything else from our guests, I think that should wrap it up for today. Yeah. And we'll have a lot more by the time next week. And thanks for joining us, and we'll bring you more. I promise that. <laughs> <laughs>